Welcome friends, welcome to Simzu. In our journey of knowledge prospers all, we start with a new edition of videos under the title Concepts in Labor Laws. Labor laws and industrial laws, friends, are full of different, different concepts. And it's in the fitness of things we understand each and every one of them in our forthcoming videos. We have already dealt with misconducts under the Industrial Employment Standing Orders Act and more so enshrined under the model standing orders. There are almost 35 to 38 videos. And uh, those of you all who have not seen can have a look at that. Yes, friends, to start with concepts in labor laws, today we are going to deal with the first concept. There is no chronology as such, but then these are just, you can say, uh, leaves from labor laws. So we have picked up random concepts which would be useful to our fraternity. And the first one is origins of natural justice. We are on the origins and then we are also going to see as to what is natural justice. Now friends, natural justice, this word is heard a number of times. All the while we hear natural justice in this law and that law and departmental inquiry and uh, this should uh, subscribe to the natural justice. But what is natural justice? And how did it emanate? What is the origin? Where did it come from? Why is it called natural? So many questions are there which arise in your and my mind. What is natural justice? And this is what we are going to see. Possibly, friends, it could be in two or three parts and we are going to label them as part one, two, three. And then the chronology is to be followed and today we are on origins of natural justice. Now, friends, you see, this word natural justice contains the word natural. Why natural? Why is it natural justice? Because it is as old as the hills. Nobody knows when the metamorphosis took place and all the hills came into picture. And these hills are there since time immemorial. It's almost, I mean, all the hills are there since almost millions of years. And since then is natural justice. It is said that you are born with natural justice and you die with natural justice and you need not go to a school and college to understand as to what is natural justice. But we are going to see natural justice in detail and today we are on the origin part of it. Well, there are so many theories to natural justice. Of course, I told you one, you are born with natural justice. But then, it relates to the first chapter of the Bible itself, that is the Genesis. The first chapter of the Bible reflects on Genesis as to how everything came into picture. And then there is a mythological story. It's a believe it or not story. And the story is that uh, Adam is supposed to be the first man on earth. Eve is supposed to be the first woman on earth. And the story progresses that there was a tree which contained apples. And Adam and Eve, first man and women on earth, and there was God, and God is supreme in his powers. God advised Adam, there was a dictate from God, there was an ordinance from God, there was a direction from God, there was a rule from God, there was a mandate from God, that I'll just come along and you will not touch this fruit of knowledge. You will not touch this apple. God went away. The story progresses that it was Eve, the first woman, who instigated Adam. Come on. I mean, in Hindi we put it, Adam, tum aage bado, hum tumhare saath hai. This is something which was done by Eve. And Eve instigated Adam, come on, nothing happens. Take the fruit, pluck it, eat it. And Adam did the same. When our Adam followed suit, he plucked the apple and ate it. And then God came. God came back. Now, I told you, God is supreme in his powers. There was an express will, mandate, rule, whatever you can call, ordinance from God that you will not touch the apple and eat it. And Adam has disobeyed God. Adam has defied God. Now, a great question arises, did God punish Adam? This is a case of total disobedience. 
And as I told you, God is supreme in His power. You cannot tell God, you didn't tell me, and all of those defenses are not available. God has told you, you have disobeyed God. And a great question which arises is, for this disobedience, did God punish Adam? And the answer, friends, is a simple no. God did not punish Adam. You will wonder as to why did not God punish Adam because he is already defied and disobeyed God. Instead of punishing him, God asked him a question, do you want to put up a defense? This is the first right of natural justice which is given by God himself which is enshrined in the maxim called Audi Alterem Partem, that is the right to be heard. And if this right of natural justice can be given by God, who are you and me as humans to deny it to each other? Origins of natural justice. How much intelligence is required to understand that before you punish a person, you have to give him a hearing? Yes, it's that. You need not... It's the simplest form of justice we can say. And today we are on the origins and 17th century, I still remember, there's a case called Calvin's case wherein the Honorable Judge said that natural justice is above judicial law and municipal law and that is why it is called eternal law. It is written by the finger of God in the hearts of men long before Moses gave the Ten Commandments. And Moses is supposed to be the first reporter of law in this world. Everybody knows that story. Moses, Moses was on Mount Sinai in Israel and the God gave the Ten Commandments and the Ten Commandments were then uh, were given unto the masses. Well, we, there was a movie also, I believe, the Ten Commandments. The question is, origins of natural justice. In Indian mythology, there are instances of natural justice in Kautilyas or Chanakya's Arthashastra wherein he has emphasized on the right to be heard. Well, it is such a fundamental right. And today, in the origins of natural justice, we are going to see so many things. Yes, friends, under origins of natural justice, we find that this is not a very innovative concept and its presence can be traced ages and centuries back. And then what we see that the observance of natural justice is very necessary in any law which would be called as judicial or administrative, whenever you say there is a judicial or an administrative law which is arbitrary, contrary to certain principles or the rights of individuals are uh, decided in, an, in a capricious manner which cannot be sustained on the anvil or the touchstone of natural justice. Natural justice, I mean, in... Indian law as well as English law, it has its roots way back. Some of the cases which are old cases which we are going to see and which judges have commented time and again. Well friends, this again takes us to the premise of what exactly is natural justice. Natural justice friends is also called common sense law. You and me both have common sense and so does each and every Tom, Dick and Harry who stays on earth. And we have to appeal to the common sense. So does it uh, whatever theories are put forth, whatever defenses are put forth, can they be sustained on the anvil of common sense is the question. If the answer is yes, you are doing some sort of a justice. And then, well, natural justice, are they, what is natural justice? They are not even codified canons. There is no codification. There is no numbering. There is no 1, 2, 3, 4, 4. Say, for example, we have Indian Penal Code. There is numbering. Section 302 is equal to Murder. Section 378 is theft. 383 is extortion. 354 is outraging of modesty. 499 is defamation. 376 is rape. Numbers are fixed. In natural justice, they are not codified canons. There is no numbering. But it is yet something to do with principles of natural justice and it is something to do with principles of common sense and conscience of a man. Certain things are ingrained by birth in you and me. And these are the principles of conscience. And then we say, yes, my soul speaks with me. It doesn't appeal to me. It doesn't, I am unable to accept it. What ultimately do you want to say? You ultimately want to say is it does not, it's not in consonance with the conscience of a man. Natural justice is the administration of justice in a common sense liberal way. 
yes, what is a common sense liberal way? You have to give him a hearing. What does he want to say? And that's why I said you are born with natural justice. You see, God has been so kind with all of us. He is ingrained and infused those elements of natural justice into all of us. And justice which is substantially, uh, substantially based on ideals and human values. We all have human values. We just have to cater to them in doing justice. We have to give him a hearing. That is natural justice. And we are yet on its origins. And it is also natural justice. One more thing, friends. It is to be freed from linguistic considerations and uh, you can say what are the technical or the grammatical niceties. It has got nothing to do with that. It is just to be freed from the shackles of linguistic considerations, grammatical niceties. Answer is very simple. Even an illiterate person who has never been to a school and college also knows as to what is natural justice. Okay, friends. So, this was part one of the concept of origins of natural justice. We have not seen what is natural justice as yet, which we are going to see in the forthcoming videos. And today we have seen what are origins of natural justice, which is yet to be continued in part two through by what are cases and all of those things. Okay. So friend, in our journey of knowledge prospering all at Simzu, we bid a goodbye to you only to meet you in our next video that is origins of natural justice part 2 thank you